Okay, in this video we're going to look at something called Gauss's Lemma, which has something to do with quadratic residues and the Legendre symbol. So let's just recall that A is a quadratic residue modulo P if there's a solution to X squared is congruent to A mod P. And then the Legendre symbol is like a question. It asks, are you a quadratic residue mod P? And it's written as this parentheses A over P. And the answer is 1 if you are a quadratic residue and negative 1 if you are not a quadratic residue. Okay, so Gauss's lemma uh, says the following. So if you have an odd prime, the prime does not divide A, then you let N be this number, so it is the number of least positive residues of this list, a, 2 times a, 3 times a, up to p minus 1 over 2 times a, and it's the number of those that are bigger than p over 2. So it's a little bit technical, which is why we're going to do an example before the proof. And the conclusion of the theorem is that this Legendre symbol A by P, in other words, is A a quadratic residue, is answered by negative 1 to this number N. Okay, good. So let's do this illustrating example before we look at the proof. So let's say P is equal to 13, and let's say A is equal to 5. So now what we need to calculate is um, 1 times a, 2 times a, 3 times a, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we'll have 5, which is equal to 5. We have 2 times 5, which is 10, which doesn't reduce mod 13. We have 3 times 5, which is 15, which is the same thing as 2 mod 13. We have 4 times 5, which is 20. Now, 20 is the same thing as 7 mod 13. We have 5 times 5, which is the same thing as 25. Now, 25 is the same thing as 12 mod 13. And then finally, we have 6 times 5, which is 30, which is the same thing as 4 mod 13. Now, notice that's as far as we need to go because all we need to go to is P minus 1 divided by 2 times A, which would be 12 divided by 2, which is 6 six times a which is five so this is as far as we need to go now we need to count up how many of these are greater than p over two which is the same thing as being greater than or equal to p plus one over two given the fact that p is an odd prime so that means greater than or equal to seven so let's see this one is greater than or equal to seven this one is and this one is so for this setup um, n equals three Great, which means we can say this Legendre symbol 5 by 13 um, is equal to negative 1 to the 3, which equals negative 1, which the conclusion here is 5 is a uh, quadratic non-residue mod 13. So at least in terms of this lemma, uh, 5 is a quadratic non-residue. So let's now also check that with Euler's criterion to make sure it makes sense. So that means we also know that 5, 13 is the same thing as 5 to the p minus 1 divided by 2, which should be 5 divided by 6. But now notice that's the same thing as 5 squared cubed. But then right here we calculated 5 squared and we found out it was 12, which is the same thing as negative 1. So notice that's the same thing as negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1. And we got this uh, same value of the Legendre symbol two ways. One from this lemma we have yet to prove and one from Euler's criterion. So I'll clean up the board and then after we're all set, what we'll do is look at the proof of this uh, carefully. Okay, so now that we've done an illustrating example of this lemma, we're going to look at the proof. Okay, so what we want to do is consider the least residues of this list, A, 2 times A, 3 times A, all the way up to P minus 1 divided by 2 times A. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is let R1 up to Rn equal the numbers from this list that are bigger than P over 2. So numbers from, let's maybe label this list 1 that 
are bigger than P over two. Good, and then the next thing we wanna label S1 up to SM to be the numbers from this list that are, that are less than P over two. So this is numbers from this list one that are less than P over two. And no, now notice we don't have to worry about any that are equal to P over two because P over two is not an integer. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is the following. So now consider this list made up of S1 through SM and then some things built out of R1 through RN. So we want to consider P minus R1, P minus R2, all the way up to P minus RN, and then S1 up to SM. Okay, now what we want to notice from this, this list are there are um, exactly P minus one over two members of this list. Now we don't yet know that they are incongruent, but what we will show is that they are incongruent. So uh, that's the next claim that we want to do. So these are all different. <clears throat> Good, uh, so how we'll do that is, first of all, we will notice that everything of the form P minus RI and P minus RJ, those are all different. And that just comes from the fact that all the RIs and the RJs are different uh, by how we define them. Furthermore, we know all the SIs and the SJs are different. And that's the same thing by the way that we created these SIs and these SJs. So the only thing we need to check are that the P minus RI and the SJs are different. So let's uh, do that by contradiction. So what we'll do is we'll suppose that P minus RI is congruent to SJ mod P. Okay, great. But notice what that tells us is that minus RI is congruent to SJ mod P because, well, P minus RI is obviously negative R, RI. Okay, now the next thing we want to notice is that these RIs, this is a multiple of A, and this SJ is also a multiple of A, so that means we can write minus KI times A is congruent to KJ times A mod P. Great, but now what we can do is cancel the A's from both sides, given the fact that A is invertible mod P, and we get negative KI is congruent to KJ mod P. But now notice that these K's are just taken from the numbers one to P minus one. And so this is actually impossible if, if you're between one and P minus one over two, because that would flip one of them to being negative, which is uh, not allowed in this case. So that means we have a contradiction here. In other words, these have to be incongruent. And so now notice that these are incongruent. So these are all incongruent and they're all between one and P minus one over two. So that means this list is the same thing as the list of all the numbers between one and P minus one over two. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll pick up from that spot and uh, finish the proof. <coughs> Okay, so we've just established these two lists are the same. So here we're working modulo P. So we have P minus R1 up to P minus Rn, S1 up through Sm, all those mod P are the same thing as the numbers one to P minus one mod P. So now what we're gonna do is calculate the product of these two lists two different ways. So now let's calculate over here. We have P minus R1, up to P minus Rn times S1 up to Sm. So that's the same thing as one times two up to P minus one over two. So we know that that is P minus one over two factorial. And I'll just put the triple equal sign here, but we're working mod P everywhere. 
Okay, good. So now the next thing I want to do is reduce down this side so we can replace all these P minus R I's with minus R I. So this is the same thing as minus R1 up to minus R n, and then s1 up to sm, but now notice that's equal to minus 1 to the n, and then we have r1 up to rn, s1 up to sm, but then now let's recall exactly how these things were defined. So r1 through rn, those were all of the numbers between uh, a, 2a up to p minus 1 over 2a that were <coughs> Um, bigger than P over 2, and the S's were the ones that were less, so that means putting them all together we get uh, this following product. So we get A times 2A times 3A up to P minus 1 over 2A. In other words, we get negative 1 um, to the N, and then we have A to the P minus 1 over 2. Good. And then we get uh, P minus 1 over 2 factorial. So the minus 1 to the end just carries down. Then if we're taking the product of all of those, this is how many a's we have. And then this is the coefficient in front of all of those a's being multiplied together. Okay, good. So now let's look at the extreme left-hand side of this, and we'll bring down the extreme right-hand side of this. So this is p minus 1 over 2 factorial. And now notice that since we're working mod p and all of these numbers are relatively prime to p, we can cancel. Great. And that leaves us with negative 1 to the n times a to the p minus 1 over 2 is congruent to 1 mod p. That's what's left. Now we'll multiply both sides by negative 1 to the n, and that will give us a to the p minus 1 over 2 is congruent to negative 1 to the n mod p. Great, but now we're actually done because this Legendre symbol A by P by Euler's criterion is congruent to A to the P minus one over two, and we've just shown that is negative one uh, to the N mod P. So this finishes the proof.